Hey everybody, what is up? I've got a Path of Exile video for you guys today. Believe it or not, I've actually had a pretty long history with this game. Ever since 2011, back when it was in its closed beta status, was when I first started playing Path of Exile. I've played it on and off over the years as it's progressed, as it's added its third act, its fourth act, and then most recently its fifth through tenth acts. And it's in this latest iteration of the game that I find myself once again addicted to it just like I did all those years ago in 2011 when I first encountered it. And God, has it changed so much in so many meaningful ways. The game is far better than it used to be and no less addictive. And while I've been waiting very patiently for uh, Absolver to come out, as well as Shadow of War to come out in the future, and a little bit of Destiny 2 on PC, in the meantime I've been distracting myself with Path of Exile, but I find myself in a position where I'm very likely going to continue playing it after all of these other games come out. Just because of one thing. And that one thing is hardcore. In Path of Exile, hardcore is all about staying alive. Because if you die, you lose your ability to play that character in the hardcore league of your choosing. Now you can choose to play in like the hardcore standard league, which is just like the standard league but hardcore. Or you can play in one of the newer leagues that releases every two to three months. And in this case, it's called the Harbinger League, which has a couple of special rules. And uh, it's always refreshing to play these leagues because you can actually earn these permanent visual microtransactions by completing challenges. So there's a little incentive there to play these new leagues on top of the new gameplay that they provide. And whenever these new leaks come out, there's always a standard version of that new league and the hardcore version. And that is what I have been playing exclusively. And I am also currently on my fourth character. My first character, I actually got to level 61. I got to the final uh, boss of Act 7. I was feeling pretty good, but I died due to some weaknesses in my build, as well as not taking advantage of uh, various services that allow you to trade with other players pretty easily online. And now I'm on my fourth character, and I'm feeling a lot more confident in my build, in my gear, and in my ability to gear myself outside of the loot that I get from just randomly slaying monsters. Here's the cool thing though, I personally don't like to use other people's builds, I feel like it's just kind of, I mean yeah you can use that build to get to end game, and to get as far as you can, but it doesn't feel like me. It doesn't feel like something that I was able to accomplish because I'm stealing somebody else's work or somebody else's design. You know what I'm saying. So I like to use my own build. Well, Once I do find my own build that works and can get me to endgame, I'll be able to do the solo self-find version of the hardcore server. This means that I can't play with other people and I can't trade with anybody else either. And that will be the ultimate challenge and that's something that I'm looking forward to. But here's the reason why I wanted to talk about Path of Exile in the first place, in that Hardcore, the way it's designed, is a lot of fun. It's not like Diablo 3's Hardcore, where you get as far as you can, and if you die, it's just completely over. No, because in Path of Exile, you can still play that character just in the standard league. So if you do want to continue to play the character and test your build, you can... I, I mean, I don't personally. Whenever I die, I just delete the character and make a new one. But even when I do that, the stash, all of the loot that I had, all of the currency and orbs and skills that I found during my previous playthrough when I was alive, I put in my stash, and I can access that stash on any new character that I make in the Hardcore League. This is super great because it allows me to get further and further essentially every single time I play because I'll have more and more loot to work with, more and more currency, and more and more skills. This pretty much allows me to fund new characters with all sorts of loot and everything that I found previously in my stash, making new builds a lot more viable or making the same build that I used completely doable because hey I already have a lot of the resources that I might have stashed back there from earlier levels. In a way, it's kind of like Rogue Legacy and how, yeah, sure, you're going to be dying a lot, but every time you die, you can add a little bit on to that permanent progression that allows you to get a little further every time. So it's, in a way, kind of like that. And I think that's the reason that I am as hooked as I am into playing hardcore on Path of Exile. 
because once I'm dead and forced to make a new character, I don't have to start over from the very beginning, from completely scratch. I have things to work with, I have things that can get me farther than previously, like I'll have a variety of uh, unique rings and exotic armors and weapons to work with that normally you wouldn't in most other games that have this similar type of hardcore. But that's not the only thing that makes hardcore as appealing as it is in Path of Exile. And for me, that's having acts 5 through 10 to work with to continue to level myself so that by the time I'm level 80 or so, I'll have completed all acts 1 through 10 and am finally able to get to the end game, where it's a lot more uh, repetitive but also a lot more varied because everything's more random and there's a lot of random modifiers, but it is also very, very much more dangerous. Now, compared to the past, when you had three or four acts to play through, you had multiple difficulties to work with. So, you would go through acts one through three or one through four, and then you would go on to the next difficulty and repeat those same acts again, and then you would repeat them again, and then you would repeat them a final time, and then finally you get to the end game where you have all the random maps and all that stuff. In this case, though, it's different because all you have to do is get through acts one through ten. And not only is the pacing better through difficulty because of this, but also through the way the acts are, the bosses that they give you, the mechanics they throw at you, there's a lot of variance between acts 1 and between acts 10. You're going to go through a lot of different scenarios, even the story is relatively engaging. And it's neat to find that acts 6 through 10 are going to take you through the first three acts once again, but this time things have changed. The environments have changed, uh, monster placement, monster density, all of that has changed, and even the story in these earlier areas that you're going through once again have changed much more so than in previous uh, ways that they have designed hardcore around having the acts, you know, 1 through 3, and then multiple difficulties of each. It's not just going through the same area once again with the higher difficulties and more difficult monsters. There's actually different layouts, different stories, different environments altogether, but it's still kind of the same environments, just with different circumstances that revolve more around the story and not just the difficulty. And this is something that I find very engaging as well as replayable. And this is my fourth time through these areas, and it still has that luster for me with the sub-bosses and the main boss of each act acting as a sort of checkpoint. Are you strong enough? Do you have enough health? Do you have enough resistances? And then if you beat the boss, then yeah, that basically answers yes to all those questions and you can move on to a slightly harder act as you continue to move forward. So when it comes down to it, playing softcore versus hardcore is a really different thing. In softcore, it's a lot more casual. You are basically guaranteed to get to the end game no matter what you do, no matter what build you use. You just have to continue to level, make sure you have enough damage, and make sure you don't die all that often. But it almost doesn't really matter all that much because you can just get up again and get back to it. But in hardcore, it's so much more of a thrill. Those moments when something hits you really hard and you're down to a quarter health or 10% health really get your blood pumping. Because as soon as you die, it's over. All those hours that you put into your character, all that work, you have to do it again, but it's not, not everything's completely lost. You have options to work with because of all of that time and effort you put into your character and all the, everything that you've collected in your stash. And that's why I personally found that I've kept coming back to it day after day for the past couple of weeks. On top of everything that I've said here already, the depth of the gameplay, the depth of the character customization, the way that you can ascend your class four different times, each time progressing through a new passive skill tree that is like essentially taking the class that you started off with and giving you one of three more advanced versions of that same class to spec into, it's really, really cool and gives you an even greater degree of customization on top of the already massive passive skill tree, the skills, the way you can customize your gear through the uh, orb currency system. It's very heavy on RPG, and that's something I can appreciate for sure. So let me know what you think in the comments down below about Path of Exile, about Hardcore, about really the game in general. Do you play it on PC? Do you play it on Xbox? Hey, we'll have a discussion about it. I think that would be pretty cool. If you want to see more content from Path of Exile, make sure to let me know. It's something that I think I'm going to be playing for a while. Yeah, there's so many different builds that I want to try, 
on top of wanting to get to end game and seeing how far I can survive and completing all the challenges and climbing the leaderboards of people who are actually still alive and almost reaching level 100. If you enjoyed the video, you know what buttons to press to make me happy as a YouTuber. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.